remain direct. 60, 70,000. I hated the 60s and 70s. This is the way we're going into the 90s. Roll on the next century. Be thinking, be thinking in the bowels of Christ. But you may be mistaken. People seem to have come, and you said we'll be here. 120,000. Thanks to Zeno. Who? We all hope the festival is going to be a big success, Mr. Silk. Really, we do. Uh, we just want to keep trouble down to a minimum. Sure, you do. you're looking forward to your holiday. When do you go? Tomorrow. Doing this gets me out of the packing. Packing. Your boy here? Said he could come for a couple of hours. G was alive, she'd have let him come. And G wouldn't. Well, I like the sound of this. I never went on music with that before, but perhaps I should have. What a hot dog. I'd rather have a pair of earplugs. What are you doing? I'm trying to see where my son is. Looking like for a needle in a haystack. There he is. Where is he? 
leather jacket. She wants to look like the rest, that's all. Zeno's manager. Well, it looks as like it should be married to Zeno. So you are a fan after all. My son is. I didn't touch it. Sunday's estate until I give permission. We shall be making further announcements shortly. Thank you. I suppose you're happy now. No comment, please. No comment.
She's been dead at least five days. So it happened before the festival. And she's no teenager. Oh, how old is she? Oh, late twenties, maybe thirty. Yeah. Only no looking for the murder weapons, glass everywhere. Yeah. Remains of a rather cheap bottle of red wine, I'd say. Looks like her attacker went completely mad. Oh, in what way? Rather grisly, I'm afraid, Rich. She's been beaten with such force that I'd say whoever did it actually smashed the bottle against the bones of her face. Dawn Stoner. Lives in London. And you're visiting her mother. Now she's gone in the harsh light of day. When she'll return, the night would not say. And I have left to vision the time. <laughs> when once more she'll come. Are you all right, Mrs. Stoner? Yes. That's her. Yeah, I tell you to double down at one four. You're breaking up, brother, down at two five. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, I assume yes, that you are breaking. I am calling call also to see if I can get you anything from there. And if I can, uh, I'll let you know. Glad to see you Monday, but I suppose it'll be one of your fly visits, and you won't condescend to stop the night. Yes, I wrote that to her. She never would have visited me if I hadn't... ...made a proper mess of her, didn't I? Me? Some man. There was always some man. I saw her get off the bus, over there, and then walk across and into the cul-de-sac. Up there? Yes. The cul-de-sac. But she wasn't wearing a red dress. It was purple. Mauve. Very bright. This was last Monday? Yes. The 6th. Thank you. You know, this is a very nice neighborhood. I'm sure she wasn't from anywhere around here. She was a waitress in a club. A place called Harpo's up in London. I never went there. She wouldn't let me. God knows what kind of place it was. But I do know you wouldn't find a decent girl going down that lane with a man, now would you? Had he done anything to her? If you mean I should have been sexually assaulted, apparently not. Have you got a photo of Dawn that we could use? She came down on the train, the one that gets in at half past eleven. I've got a dinner for her. A bit of steak. We chatted a bit. What do you talk about? Nothing about men, if that's what you mean. She was angry because some little boy on the train had wiped his sticky fingers down her dress. She had to change into something she had here. Was that when she changed into the red dress that we found her in? Oh, no. That wasn't hers. 
You sure? I don't know where that came from. There was a mauve thing she had here, a suit. She put that on. Well, like I said, we chatted a bit, and then she went up to see her gran. That's my mother. Lives upstairs. Oh, well, maybe I should talk to her. She's sleeping. Doctor gave her some pills. Oh, yes, of course. So Dawn was here all Monday. Caught the 4.15 train back. Left here just before 4. Said she had to be back in the club by 7. Oh, here we go. She sent me this for Christmas. Not exactly the sort of picture a mother wants of her daughter, wouldn't you say? Oh, about that suit she had on. Oh, yeah? It was more or less new. She'd only worn it once. I know a lady who'd give me 30 pounds for it. Inspector Burton, Kings Markham Police. We are investigating the murder of the young woman whose body was found in the quarry last night. I wonder if you saw anybody walking into the estate last Monday, late last Monday afternoon. She would have been wearing either a red or perhaps a, a bright mauve dress. Um, yes, as a matter of fact, I did see someone. Would you like to come in, Inspector? Thank you. Uh, about my height. A lot of um, brown hair, cut in that sort of shaggy way they all go for. Um, besides her handbag, she had um, it was a brown carrier bag, <coughs> very heavily made up. What was she wearing? A tight skirt, quite short, but just above the knee. And the, and the jacket came out and, and, and it came in like in a, with a bustle, with a mauve silk lining and mauve silk lapels. <clears throat> showed a bit too much of, of her cleavage, if you know what I mean. But it matched the shoes. Got a very good memory, Mrs. Peveril. Oh, yes, and um, uh, broad lapels and deep cuffs. It was the mauve of that jacket. It was so bright it hurt your eyes. And with the shoes, with the heels, well, it made her look, well, tarty. They're putting work way down the list, in a way in what we call the force. Hello? Is that Mike? Oh, Dora. Hello. Oh, where's Reg? I meant to be leaving for the airport in half an hour. Um, I'll get him for you. He's still there. Hang on. Laura, on the phone for you. Oh, my God, I forgot the phone. Sounds a bit angry. Uh, I, I'm sorry, Dora. Uh, Dora? She's hung up on me. I'll finish up in here, shall I? Oh, no, oh, thank you. Oh, I'm so sorry. What's going on? He forgot to tell his wife all these been cancelled. Oh, dear. Oh, come on, let's get everything moved. Uh, 
Tora. Tora. I'm sorry, Dora. I should have run. Don't apologize. I'm sorry. I said don't apologize. We've suspended all leave. That's everyone. You need the rest. I know. So do you. Oh, thanks. Dora, I didn't mean that. I'm sorry. Oh, do stop apologizing. I ordered a cab. I am going on the holiday, even if you aren't. Good. Do you want bother to unpack your things? Oh, can't you just postpone it? No. There'll be something else. There always is. There's never been a problem before. No, because I have always cancelled before. I'm coming. Dora, don't be silly. I'll ring when I get there. Now, don't worry. It'll be all right. something on her dress. Now, when she left her mother, she was wearing this mauve suit. She took the dirty dress, drafted the cleaners in King's Market Morris Street, and then she went to the Luxie Market to buy herself some groceries. We have witnesses who saw get off of bus outside the Parkway State at uh, approximately 1,700 hours. Mrs. Peverell has given us a very detailed description of her passing the houses in the Parkway and then going onto the footpath that leads to Starton, across the fields. Now, after that, nothing. Someone must have seen her. She must have gone somewhere to change into the red dress that we found her in. Should we do a reconstruction, sir? No. I think we'll wait until we see what uh, the Starton House to House brings us. Any more questions? Thank you. Speak to Mr. Pebble? Uh, yes, he didn't see anything. He says he was working all that night. Oh, it's all right for some, isn't it? A doting wife. He doesn't have to lift a finger. Another drink? Not tonight, thanks. We'll talk to you about the case. Sorry, I promised I'd be home an hour ago. I'm really late. But this is important. Are you all right? Of course I'm all right. I'm sorry, it's just, um... Oh, forget it, Mike. You go home. I'm uh, Detective Chief Inspector Waxford. Can I help you? Um, I don't know. I I've come down from London. I'm Joan Ma. And? I'm... I was Dawn's flatmate. John? John! Pat? Hi, Dad. Um, I'm gonna be a bit late. I'm round at David's, so they get your knickers in a twist. See you later. Bye. It's Auntie Grace here. I'm um, just checking when Pat will be in next week for me to come round and fit a bridesmaid's dress. Give me a ring when you get in. Bye. So you uh, both worked at Harpo's? Yes. That was where we met. 
Dawn was on holiday. She wasn't due back at work till today. I've been worried about her this week, but I thought she'd be back today. Then when I heard the news, well, I got here as fast as I could. Yes, thank you. When Dawn was found, she was wearing a red dress. It's uh, rather badly stained. I wonder if you'd be brave enough to have a look at it. May I touch it? Yes. This is only a size 10. Dawn was a 14. But she was wearing this dress. But it wasn't hers. It must have been difficult to get on. Pat? Oh, Pat. Hi. Shall I go down and pick some supper then? Uh, no, it's all right. I'll do that. It's okay, Dad. I can do it. Pat? How's school? Busy. Looking forward to Grace's wedding. She's marrying an old school friend, isn't she? Uh, yes, I think so. No, she is. I remember her telling me about him. I wonder if I'll end up marrying any of the prats in my class. Hope not. Did she have any boyfriends? Nothing steady. Not that I know of, anyway. Anyone who hated her? You mean, was she popular? No. Look. I don't want to speak badly of her, but she was a bit of a liar. More than that, I'd say she was a compulsive liar. So it was difficult to really ever know what was going on inside her head, if you know what I mean. What sort of things did she lie about? Well, she'd say she knew famous people. When it was obvious, she didn't. It was really embarrassing. Like who? Like Zeno, the pop star. She met him once. Once. Suddenly, they'd been lovers since they were in their teens. She even used to pretend he was on the phone when I was there. Zeno. Who else? Hundreds. She lived in a fantasy world. This isn't much use to you, is it? Sometimes I think I was her only friend, and I wasn't that much of a friend, was I? I'm sorry. Dora? Dora? I can't hear you. You'll have to speak up. Progress has been slow, although positive. And earlier, Malcolm Brown spoke to Deputy Chief Constable Freeborn in Kings Market. She
with Constable Freeborn, could you tell us, is this murder connected in any way with the Pop Festival? No, it seems that Dawn Stoner's death has nothing to do with the Pop Festival, which started that incident. Forensic and other tests indicate that the murder took place on the Monday before that. This is a particularly vicious crime, and we are working flat out in order to apprehend this murderer. This man is dangerous and must be caught, and caught fast. This is Malcolm Brown at King's Markham, handing you back to the studio. Dora? Yes. Are you watching TV? Yes, I am. What do you think? I thought you were very good. Oh, thank you very much. You made any progress? Not much. Well, there's lots of people watching us on this one. I know. Well, it's some of us, you know. I know. here weren't good enough for Dawn. She was a proper little snob. Though what she'd got to be snobbish about, I'll never know. I think it's possible Dawn went to meet an old friend on Monday night. We want you to try and remember the names of any old boyfriends she had. You can get off back to bed now, Mother. You must be tired. I am not tired. I do not want to go to bed, Phyllis. I don't have much excitement. Excitement? I like that. It's a nice way to speak when Dawn's had her head bashed in by a maniac. Now, come along. I think Mrs. Beckham should stay. Oh. She uh -huh. might be able to help. Can you think of anyone, Mrs. Stoner? Her dad never let her have boyfriends. My husband tried every way he could to teach her the meaning of decency. Tried using his strap, mostly. You and George had no right to have kids. Always smacking her and, and yelling at her. Not one devil out and two come in. That's what I always say. Can't believe that uh, Dawn never mentioned any man that she was friendly with. I never said she didn't. You'll get your stomach trouble, Mother, if you don't leave those acid drops alone. <laughs> the fact is, it was all lies with Dawn. I stopped listening after a time. Maybe. There was Harold Goodbody. Don't be so stupid. Harold wouldn't know her now. Dawny told me herself that she had dinner with him only a few weeks back. And you believed her. <laughs> uh, who is this man? <laughs> always one for a joke was Harold. <laughs> April Fool's Day was all year round for him. He and Dawny were friends from the first day at school. Dawny would bring him back here for tea. One day, I found him using our phone. He'd rung this woman and said that he was an engineer. He'd said to her there was an emergency and she must pour boiling water down the receiver. Wait ten minutes, then cut the lead with scissors. Oh, he was funny. Harold was a real scream. <laughs> what age was he then? About 15. And he still lives around here? Oh, no, of course not. Uh, he went to London. Mr Silk of Sundays helped him. Harold's famous now. Famous? Harold Goodbody? No, no. He changed his name. What was his name, Phyllis? See now.
poachers. Sino. What's wrong? Nothing. Something's the matter. Well, if you must know, Dora went on holiday by herself. We parted on bad terms, that's all. Oh. There's nothing. Good. Has she rung? Nope. Oh. Don't keep saying old like that. Sorry. Oh, you just like, feel like a jilted adolescent. It's ridiculous. What were you saying about Zeno? Uh, he was her ex-boyfriend. He was an old flame. There might be something there. Zeno doesn't live in Stareton. He's rich, talented, an artist. I don't suppose he makes a habit of uh, eating tinned food in fields with waitresses. But you didn't know him. Yeah, yeah, she did. When he was a boy, a prankster. You've seen Zeno. Harold Goodbody no longer exists. Miss Moa, district nurse, she was out at the time, and the one on the right is a Mr. Dunstant, who was a lecturer at the university. He was at work till seven on the day of the murder. And then there's the Peverins. Mrs. Peverell said she definitely saw across this field. Yeah? Well, then why didn't we get anything from the house to house at Stourton? Look at her. You can't tell me nobody saw her. Thank you. I'm sorry we're disturbing you again. There's just one or two little things to clear up. May I? Uh, would you mind not sitting on that cushion? Because I've just put a fresh cover on it. If you're going to ask me a lot of questions, I'd like my husband to be present, because uh, I might say the wrong thing if he's not here. Edward! Ah. Mr. Peverell? Yes. Detective Chief is back for Wexford. Oh, yes, I know. You didn't actually see the girl yourself, did you? Oh, I didn't, no. no. I was working. Well, perhaps we shouldn't keep you from your work there. Oh, that's all right. I could do with a break. I see. Could you just tell me exactly where it was you saw Dawn Stoner? Um, across the field. Well, that is, down the path, you know. Sure she just wasn't going in that direction, then you looked away? No, no, no. I watched her for a long time. She didn't come back. Then you must have been at an upstairs window. Yes. And you watched her from upstairs until she disappeared out of view? 
Don't you believe me? Oh, yes, of course. It's just that I want to be absolutely sure. This is very important. Yes, yes, I, I watched her until she disappeared from view. So you stood waiting and watching her for nearly ten minutes. Um, no, 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 you stay, Edward. Um... It's very important, Mrs. Beverell. I know it is. That's why I'm telling you the truth. Listen, I... I watched her for so long because I... I wanted to tell Edward what a sight she was. He, he's very particular in his tastes, being a kind of artist, and I, I save up little things to tell him when he's finished work. And did she tell you, Mr. Peverell? I don't remember. Well, maybe I forgot. I wonder why I didn't tell you, Edward. I was probably too tired to listen. Just calm down. I am calm. I'm sorry, Inspector. It's just this whole thing's made me very nervous. Yes, I'm sure it has. That's why we want to find the person that did it. <laughs> Not so close. We don't want you to fall in. Hey, look. Anything useful? Nothing from Elaine's promenade, but I have got something interesting. What size dress do you think Mrs. Peverell takes? What? I don't know. Well, do you think she can get into the red one? Maybe, when she was younger. Edward Peverell? Oh, come on. Why would she come forward if they were both involved? Oh, I don't know. Put us off the scent. I was trying to explain. I didn't have to come down here. But being the responsible citizen I am, I did. I tell Buster Keaton here everything I know. And he locks me up. The suit is exactly as described by Mrs. Peveron, down to the last detail. You uh, say you found it in the river? Yes. Look, it must have drifted downstream or something. Look, other people saw me find it. We're checking that. Oh, you are, are you? I'm not accusing you of anything. Look, you just don't believe a word I say. Trevor, did you find it? <sighs> King's Book. Which goes through the Sunday's Parklands. Bit of a coincidence, isn't it? The Mr. Mboli was working on the festival and then just happens to find a dress in the King's Brook. If you don't let me go now, I'm calling my lawyer. Did you find anything else in the room? Thank you, Mr. Mboli. You can go now. Thank you. He was involved in setting up the festival. He was in the area at the time of the murder. I should imagine a lot of people were. Maybe we're both getting a bit uh, desperate. Maybe.
She did have friends. Come on, Mother. Oh, uh, that's very kind of you. You should try a Walkman. Maybe we should see him. Waste of time. He's staying just down the road in the Cheriton Forest, property hunting. Maybe this evening, then. I wonder if this has got the whole concert on it. 
I don't care if he's got his complete works. It's in lousy bad taste. Looks like he hasn't changed much since his days as Harold. Good body. about to come. Well, anything we can do to help. Would you like to come with me, Mrs. Peverell? I'd like to see her on her own. I'll be here. I'd like to speak to you, Mr. Peverell. Me? If you'll come with me. Where did you find it? This is what you saw her wearing when she went into the fields, right? Yes. Is that where you found it? No. Now, I'd like you to take a look at this and tell me if you recognize this piece of clothing as well. You don't recognize this piece of clothing? No. What do you mean by showing me this? I just wondered if you'd seen this dress before. What are you trying to say, Inspector? Did you get up to London at all? Oh, yes, in connection with my work. I'll stay overnight? I have done. When did the last go? Oh, I don't know. Uh, June the 1st, I think. I didn't stay. No. Scenes are made if I venture too far from the matrimonial nest. <laughs> what sort of scenes? None of your business. Ah, you mentioned it. You asked me if I stayed overnight. No, I didn't stay overnight. Your wife went to evening class on Monday the 6th. Tell me about your movements that night. I already told the other one. Well, tell me. I went into my studio and I stayed there until 11 o'clock when my wife came home. There were no buses that time of night. She didn't take your car with her. Mrs. Clark gave her a lift. Friendly with Mrs. Clark, is she? Ask her. Yes, they're friends. Is this going to go on much longer? One more thing and I'm finished. Why didn't you pick her up? Damn it all. Why the hell should I? I was busy working. Oh, yes, of course you were. Usually, I do drive her. That's why I'm here today. But you were too busy that night. That's right. The worm turned. Good evening. We've met before, I think. I don't think so. At the festival. Is there any chance that we could have a word with Zeno? It's resting. Probably asleep. Oh, well, we'll not hurry. We'll wait till he wakes. Can you give me some idea what it's about? Dawn Stoner. OK. I'll tell him. But couldn't you come back tomorrow? No. We'll wait. We'll give you 15 minutes, and then we'll be up. It's a menage a trois, if ever I saw one. I wonder if 
Is there two bedrooms or only one in that suite? For an avowed Puritan, you take a lubricious interest in these things. Get your nose stuck in there. Edward? 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 Talk to me. Ten minutes. That's all you've got. You got my tape then. You've got quite a voice. I didn't really listen to it. Nell, um, get room service to send up some coffee, will you? Perhaps they'd like a real drink. You mean perhaps you'd like a real drink? Go on, then. Question me. They're not very bright. What's your relationship to Dawn Stoner? <laughs> <laughs> Tea. I didn't know you had any taste buds left. <laughs> I expect even policemen play practical jokes on one another from time to time. Or are you all too sophisticated? No. Our jokes are more sophisticated. Why don't you go and improve your makeup or something? Do I have to? Yes, run along. I suppose you've been talking to Mummy Stoner, or even Granny Peckham. They said you were at school with Dawn. So were a lot of people. Dawn told her grandmother that you took her out to dinner the Friday before she was killed. Now, we know that can't be true, because you were in Manchester that day. But we want to know how well you knew her and when you last saw her. When we both lived in Kings Markham, she was my girlfriend. You mean you were lovers? I was her first lover. We were 16. Rather moving, don't you think? Then I... Um, I didn't see her again until this year. Where did you see her? In Harpo's. Dawny serving drinks to all those pretentious gits. I would have laughed if they hadn't hurt to see her like that. Everyone staring at her like she belonged to them. She even remembered what I liked to drink. Orange juice with sugar in it. Strange meeting someone you haven't seen for that long, isn't it? Brought back all that innocence. Did you see her again? Just the once. Phoned her up, that's all. You had her phone number? She gave it to me. Nell tried to eat the napkin it was written on, consumed with jealousy as she was. I thought, why not? When did you ring her? Three, four weeks ago. But she was... Uh, well, too enthusiastic. You got bored? Yeah, I choked her off. What? Said I was too busy to meet. Fancy her telling people we've gone out for a meal. Poor kid. The next thing you'll want to know is where I was on June the 6th. Where were you on June the 6th? At my house in Dovett Garden, South Kensington. Nell, Guffer and I were all there. We came back from Manchester on the Sunday and we 
Lazed about and slept all that Monday. Here comes Goffo, bang on cue. Who's taking my name in vain? Tell the officer where I was on June the 6th, Goffo. I love this. No, with me and Nell. We're all together in Dovet Gardens. All day and all night. Nell can tell you the same. Nell! Where were we Monday before last? Um... Oh, Dovet Gardens, of course. Beautiful. We didn't go out all day, did we? We were exhausted after our trip to Manchester. We lead a very quiet life. I didn't kill Dawny out of passion. Goffo didn't kill her because I told him to, though. I'm sure he would have done if I asked him. Nell didn't kill her out of jealousy. Also, I'm sure there was a policeman outside all that day for the fans. You'll be able to check with them. Good. Now, if you don't mind, we've got masses of stuff from estate agents to get through tonight. Yes. Well, wow. good hunting. I could almost see their tails wagging. What did they put up with it? She for love, he for money. Both for reflected glory. Oh, they're just playing with us. <laughs> I think he's funny. Like an oddy boy. And his music's so different. Well, he frightens me. I prepared myself a meal, and then I did some housework. This place is very ugly inside, but I see no reason why it should also be dirty. Did you see anything of the neighbours? I saw Mrs. Peveril go down the road at half past seven. I understand she attends some kind of evening class. You didn't go out yourself. It was a fine evening. Was it? Are you on good terms with your neighbours, Mr. Dunson? Oh, yes, very. Going to their houses, for instance? Or do they visit you? <laughs> no. No, no, I think I misunderstood you. I simply meant that we uh, nod to each other. Say a word if we meet on the street. So you can't tell us anything of the Peveril's way of life, their habits, who calls on them and so forth? No, nothing. I think I can say, Chief Inspector, that I know nothing of any private life. But my own. And what is that? What you see? It's made of a synthetic fiber and has frequently been worn by the same person, a brown-haired, fair-skinned Caucasian. There are no sweat stains in the armpit. In the fiber, there are traces of an unidentified perfume, talcum powder, antiperspirant, and carbon tetrachloride. It's cleaning fluid. What was it made? Um, it was manufactured nine years ago at KO Clothing, North London. They had outlets then in Brighton, London, Manchester. But the list goes on. All the major cities. What about here? Um, no, not here. Elaine, what would you say about the person who bought that dress? It's a man's dress. Safe. What do you mean by that? 
I mean it was bought to please a husband. Any man seeing his wife in this will know she's not made of girlfriend stuff. Dawn Stoner must have looked quite grotesque in it. Oh, it didn't belong to Dawn Stoner, we know that. Mrs. Peveril reacted very violently when she saw it. She denies ownership. Maybe she's lying. You see Mrs. Clark again? Yes, she's only known Mrs. Peveril for about a year, but during that time she says that Mrs. Peveril has lost weight rather than gained it. I feel it's unlikely Mrs. Peveril could ever have fitted into this dress. Oh, I don't know. It was bought nine years ago. It's a long time. I want every woman between the age of 30 and 60 to see this dress. I want their reactions. We have to find the owner. Or at least someone who could lead us to the owner. I've got a thought. What was that? What if Dawn saw Mrs. Peveril watching her and went on out into the fields? And then when she saw Mrs. Peveril go out, she went back. I thought about that. But it doesn't bear out. Oh, good evening. Any, uh, any news? Well, things are moving along. Perhaps you'd like me to show you exactly what she bought. Well, actually, I came in to get some supper for myself. Oh. Ah. Coleslaw. As bought by our very own murder victim. It is a bit sick, isn't it? Well, I'm coming to the conclusion the world's a pretty sick place, Mike. You, um, forgot the food in your new theory. Pepper would already have eaten. His wife gave him dinner before she went out. Well, perhaps Dawn didn't know that. Oh, my nerves, they're disgusting. Are they? Mm. So what's she going to do? I mean, stay overnight? Hide in his studio? Meatballs. Dora never lets me have those. Savoury meatballs. Who knows? Maybe they were going to run away together. Whatever they were going to do, something went seriously wrong. Well, maybe he didn't expect her at all. Everything all right, sir? How about a nice bottle of red wine to go with that? Anything? Nothing. The radio appeal brought in about 300 this afternoon. Sad, isn't it? What is? Don Stoner. I always wanted to be famous. Now she is. Well, who was it who said that everybody's famous for 15 minutes of their lives? I don't know, sir. Bob Monkhouse? Mike! Can I come back to your place? Sure. Did you write his own songs? Yes, always. That one's two years old, but it's his best. I listen to it a lot. Was there a video of this? Yeah, got it somewhere. I think I taped over it. Dad? Well, how was I to know? Does he ever write any uh, joke songs? Well, every song has a story to it. That's what makes them good. That's for you. Oh, well, I'll add it to my collection. Don't you be involved in this murder, do you? Well, the victim knew him when she was young. She must have listened to a lot of these songs. They must have meant a lot to her. Anything that lets me into the mind of the victim helps me in a case like this. He wouldn't have killed her, eh? Oh? Why do you say that? You wouldn't be so stupid. No. No, I agree. Great. I'll get the dinner on. Do you want to stay? Oh, uh, no. Dora? Who's this? This is Joan Meyer. You gave me your 
number in case I remembered anything. Oh, yes. Well, whilst I was watching your men going through some of Dawn's things, I was thinking and I remembered something. Oh, well, tell me then. It may be nothing, but hang on. Look, I'm calling from work. Is there any chance of you coming up to see me tomorrow? Yes, well, I could make it by lunchtime. Um, well, you better meet me at the club, then. Uh, uh Harpo's, yeah? You've got the address. Yes? It may be nothing. I don't want to waste your time. Oh, well, I'm sure you won't be. I'll see you, then. Made it. Good. Would you like a drink? Oh, no. Um, it can't have been Zeno who called Dawn. If I told you that we've spoken to Zeno, <laughs> and he did phone her. In fact, they were childhood sweethearts. Well, I'm surprised. But I still don't think it was him. Why? Because whoever it was, Dawn went out with him the following week. Why didn't you tell me that before? There were two separate occasions. And I didn't think to link the two until a few days ago when your men were pouring over our flat. Who do you think this man was? I don't know. Look, can we get out of here and go back to our flat? It spooks me talking about Dawn here. Do you remember exactly when you met this man? It was June the 1st, my birthday. Um, we were going to have lunch together. I'd cooked something special. Some friends were coming around. Uh, I was cooking when the phone rang. I answered it, and a man's voice asked to speak to Dawn. I didn't ask who it was, and he didn't say. I gave the phone to Dawn. Then I popped out for some courgettes. Anyway, when I got back, Dawn was flushed and excited. I asked who'd run, but she wouldn't say. She was running around, getting herself all dolled up. Really overdoing it, if you ask me. Did she ever say who it was? No. She seemed a bit angry. Angry? Mm. I see. What happened then? Well, then she went out. Said she'd try and make it back before my birthday lunch. Great, I thought. When did she get back? Um. Not till about three. Did she ever say who it was she met? Uh, some bullshit about a modeling agent she'd met at the club. Here we are. Oh. But that afternoon, she sat down and wrote to her mum arranging a visit. Oh, thank you. And uh, you didn't connect the two things at the time? Well, I do now. She wrote fast and decisively, unlike at any other time she had to make contact with her mum. She just dashed it off and posted it straight away. And she never said anything about the meeting? Well, not directly. But a couple of days later, we were both getting ready in the changing rooms at the club when she said, what would you think of a man who said he was dying to meet you and the best date he could fix up was a few drinks in the pub at lunchtime? If you were really crazy about him, you wouldn't worry, would you? 
At the time, I thought she was talking about my boy. Hasn't got any money and is married. But now that I think about it, I realize she must have been referring to the man who called on June the 1st. The man she was going to meet on the day she was killed. Now I know that wasn't Zena. He might call her, but he'd never meet her. That's exactly what he said. No. I think she met someone like herself. Someone pretending to be connected. Someone who could help her. Providing she did a bit of modeling or something. There's something I want you to see. That was the real Dawn Stone when we first met. We went on holiday together. She was happy then. Hello, Mike. Hi. Hello. Hi. Hi. Well, here it is. You ready for tomorrow? I think so. Okay. Hey, Hello? Hello, Mike. Oh, hello. How did you get on with the Mario girl? Beverly was in London on June the 1st, wasn't he? Yeah, that's right. On that day, Dawn met a man for a drink. We know it wasn't Zeno, but it could have been Peveril. When she got home, she wrote to her mother, fixing up a visit down here. Sounds interesting. Yeah, we don't have any concrete evidence linking... Dawn with Peveril. Well, not enough to get a search warrant. But I'm going to ask him if we can search his house anyway. Where are you? I thought I might go around tomorrow. Uh, you don't mind working on a Saturday, do you? Tomorrow? What's well, Grace's wedding tomorrow? All right. I forgot. Oh, well, that's all right. I'm sure she'll understand. That's all right, Mike. I can do this on my own. I really don't mind. No? You go to the wedding. Has Dora rung yet? No. Why don't you go and stay with your daughter? I can look out myself, thank you. Listen, I'll be there tomorrow. No, you go to the wedding, and I'll phone you on Sunday and tell you what happened. What do you think? What's wrong, Dad? Dad. Mr. Beverill, uh, we'd like to search your house, if you don't mind. You'd like to search our house? That's correct. Oh. Come on, then. Search all you like. Then perhaps you'll leave us alone. Very nice, Mr. Peveril. The real pornographer is in the attic. And 
along with the rest of my youth. Checked all the cupboards. Oops. Get on, Stevens. Uh, yeah, yeah, of course. You okay? Uh, yes, yeah, sir. I'm sorry if this is upsetting you, Mrs. Pavlov. No, you're not. Enjoying this, aren't you? Okay, you well, it's just you might have told us you were coming, that's all. I told you she went across the field. Wally. Well, Philosophy student, I believe, sir. Mr. Dunsam must be his uh, tutor at the university. Of course. Yes, of course. Well, she wasn't killed here, sir. Gum. I thought sure we'd find something. Right, well, you'd better get them all out, then. Yes, sir. Can I talk to you for a minute, sir? Oh, come on, then. Mrs. Peveril, sir. I, I, I wanted to tell you at the house, but I, I wasn't sure. About what? You know, I was transferred here from Brighton last year. Well, there was a bank robbery there last summer. Mrs. Peveril saw the raid and came to the police voluntarily to give evidence. You should have told me that in the house. Sorry, sir. Well, come on, then. No, I, I'm sorry. I mean, I couldn't be certain it was her until I saw her recognise me. Well, go on. It's, it's probably not important, sir. Oh, for God's sake, man! I'm oh, sorry, sir. Just tell me. Well, she's a very bad witness, sir. Very hysterical. Kept saying the whole thing was making her ill. We never caught the villain, sir. I thought you should know. Probably know already, sir. No. No, I didn't. Oh, well. Well, thanks, sir. I hope that's been of some use. Yes, it is. You settling down here all right? 
Oh, oh yes, sir. It's very nice. Thank you. This isn't it. It's another two miles. No, this is it. Here, look. Come on, then. I want to show you something. This is beautiful. See down there? Yeah. That's perfect. What? Perfect place to build our own studio. Nice idea, Goffo. <laughs> Goffo, give Martin Silk a call. Tell him I'll uh, pop round and see him this evening. Sure. Now, Goffo. Right. I uh, just wanted to show you the place where I lost my virginity. Martin Silk, please. It's Godfrey Tate. No, put me through. Zeno's manager. Titted. Yes, well, I'm not marrying again. Seeing all this has only strengthened my resolve. You won't believe who's here. I'm sure I will. My history teacher. Oh, point her out to me. Could do with some intelligent conversation. I'm avoiding her, so don't you dare talk to her. What, huh? I'm not saying. It's just if you do talk to her, don't let on you my father. I told her you were an army intelligence during the Second World War. You what? I had to. We were having an argument. It was the only way I could win. Oh, well, thank you very much, <laughs> Pat. Huh. She's very glamorous. She's OK. Yeah, well, don't look now, but she's heading over this way. I've got to go. Hello. <laughs> Hello. You must be Pat's father. I'm Jenny Ireland, Pat's new history teacher. Yes, I know. From the way she described you, I expected you to look, um, well, much older. Oh, really? <laughs> How do you know Grace? Oh, I'm a friend of the groom's. Strange things, weddings, aren't they? What's strange about them? Oh, I don't know. I don't enjoy them very much. I can't wait for them to end. Oh, well, yes, yeah, same with me, really. I'm always wishing... Look, um, would you excuse me? I just want to speak to someone before they leave. It was nice to meet you. Sorry to disturb you, but I'd like to talk to your wife. 
Don't leave me, Edward. I'm frightened. You're always bloody frightened. Let go. Not for me to interfere, but if I may say so, Mrs. Pepperell might be less frightened if you gave her the support that she wants. Please stay. Give it back to me, Godfather. No. I want to see what you carry around with you these days. God knows I don't see you in bed. Oh, shut up. Shut up yourself. Whilst the cat's away, the mice... Yeah, she married a mouse. She likes mice, does Arnell. What's this? Key. I can see that. I think we should go now. I thought I told you to throw it away. I thought I had. Now, come on, darling, let me just take... You throw it away, then. Go on! Ow! <laughs> And leave her! <laughs> what can I say, eh? She enjoys it. In Brighton, you witnessed a bank robbery. That was a most upsetting experience for you. But you quite properly went to the police to give information. You were a key witness. They questioned you exhaustively. You fancied yourself badgered. You became frightened. Ill, perhaps. You were terrified that revenge might be taken on you for the information you'd given. So you moved here to get away from that. Am I right? Absolutely. Never mind about where my roots were. My friends, madam, wanted to run away. So we run away. Please, Mr. Peverell. You've only been here a few months. And suddenly you're the witness to another crime. Oh, I've no doubt you saw Dodd Stoner. The description you gave is more precise than any other we have. If you ask me any more questions, I shall be ill again. This isn't robbery. This is murder. And I want the murderer caught before he kills anyone else. Don't you? Of course. You said you saw her go across the field to draw our attention. The attention you were so frightened of, away from you, and your neighborhood. May I suggest, and please, don't be alarmed, that either you admitted her into this house, or you saw her go into another. You fool! <laughs> and you so <laughs> You told the police lies, and you nearly dropped me in this one. God, you are sick! I'm not dead! I'm not dead! I never saw her! I never saw her! Get help! Get a doctor! Now! Remember me in my life without life. Come once more to be my wife. Day before I grieve, enter the web of let me believe the house will be a different world. She filled the door with love, scented flowers, and she'll sit with me in the fast fading light.
It didn't rain. What happened with the search? Well, I'll tell you one thing. <clears throat> Dawn wasn't killed in Peveril's house. Then why don't you go home? Just take a rest. It's Sunday. I've got to work on this. Was there anything useful on the tape? I don't know. I slept through a lot of it. What are you doing here, anyway? Dora rang. She rang you? Well, she's been trying to phone you all week, but she never gets through. She, um, sends her love, says she's having a good time, but misses you badly. Yeah, well, I'm missing her. Sounds like one of Zeno's songs. Anyway, she's cutting the holiday short, taking a flight back tomorrow night. Oh, thank goodness for that. So you better be there when she gets back. I will, I will. Why don't you come round to my place for dinner tonight? What are you doing today? Well, the kids are busy. I was going to do the garden. Hmm. But I could be free. Good. It was as you said. I wanted you to think she'd gone a long way from when Mrs. Clark phoned and she said you were coming round, I thought I'd tell you she'd gone across the field. If I'd, if I'd said she'd gone next door, you'd never have left me alone. You saw her go next door? To Mr. Dunstan's? What time was that? It's half past five. Mr. Dunstan was still at the university at that time. There are witnesses, 35 students. He was giving a lecture. Oh, somebody let her in. Did you check Zena's alibi? They were in London all day. They even had visitors, Martin Silk. They were all there, according to the police stationed outside. Can I help you? Uh, we're looking for Mr. Dunstan. Well, if you try the library, a lot of students go up there on a Sunday, upstairs. Uh, it's not a student. Well, the library's the only place open on a Sunday. I think you should know. I wasn't in Army Intelligence in the war. <laughs> what are you doing here, Mr. Brown? Excuse me. I'd like to speak to you. It is important. Leonard Dunsand is your tutor, right? Yes, sir. Oh, tell me about him. Yeah, he's my tutor. I like him. Well, what's he done? Nothing. What is there to know about him? Not much. No, I don't think even he knows himself. Strange. For a lecturer in philosophy, I mean, you would have thought that he'd... Uh... He would have found himself, no. That's a popular misconception. Is it? Yeah, I mean, look, <laughs> living teaches you how to live, yeah? And philosophy teaches you how to think. And too much thinking drives you crazy. Don't sound as crazy. Oh, man. He's just a little afraid of life, like most lecturers. What else is there to be afraid of? Where have you been? Look, nothing personal, all right? But I've got to go. I want to talk to you some more about Dunsan. Like to come into my office tomorrow? I don't know Len that well. No one does. Someone told me that he was better when his wife lived with him. I mean, he used to go away on holidays then like a normal human being. But he doesn't do anything now. But 
You can't imagine him married to her, can you? Her? Who is she? Do you remember? <laughs> At the concert, you couldn't keep your eyes off her. Come on. What's wrong? You poor thing. place on our own, eh? Sure you don't want me to come along with you? No, I don't mind sitting on my own. Well, see you after then. Fine. Wexford. No, no, go for him! <laughs> he's just gone off the day, I'm afraid. That's so, all. Mr. Tate's going to leave, though, he's having his breakfast. Had a row with his wife last night, blacked her eye. Really? Shall I take you to him? No, I can find my own way, thanks. Good morning, Mr. Tate. You know, sit down. How's the house hunting going? They're looking at Cheriton Hall today. Oh, yes, I know it. It's the uh, pumping side of the forest. How are you all going to live there? You go where Zeno goes. Oh, won't your wife find it a bit... Uh, so close to her ex-husband. I am writing thinking that she was married to Mr. Bensal. I've been trying to discover a connection between Dawn Stoner and the residents of the Pathway estate ever since her body was found there. And up until now, nothing. Well, it's a small world. Is it? Very small. Dawn was a close friend of Zeno. Zeno is a close friend of your wife's. Your wife was previously married to the man into whose house Dawn was seen going in before she was killed. Yes, it is a small world. Too small for coincidence. We were all in Dovert Gardens that day. Haven't you checked that out with the fuzz that were babysitting our fans? Never been near this pathway place. Well, you are now. You know, I shouldn't like to have your job. Meddling in people's private worlds. No, it's no fun. I'd hate to have yours, Mr. Tate. Whose wife is she, Mr. Tate? Yours? Or that singer you Yours? Or the man who divorced her? You do anything you're told, don't you? Lie, pimp, connive at obstructing the police? Maybe I lie, maybe I pimp. But conniving to obstruct the police? 
<laughs> I haven't tried that one yet. You'll do anything that Nell and Zena tell you to, won't you? I say you go on. But never mind my wife. I can deal with her. By blacking her eye. I think you found out about your wife and her ex-husband. Zena was all right. But an ex-husband, that's different. <laughs> I should remember next time to assault my wife in the privacy of my own hotel room. Take it, Mr. Wexford. It'll be safer with you. She might get it back from me and use it again. In my safe world, to be somebody in your city, to own your streets, where I strut, underneath, share the dream. Hello? Is that Patricia? Yeah. Hello? Hello, this is Jenny Ireland. I, I hope I'm not disturbing anything. Uh, no, no. Well, it, it's just that when I got back from the library, I looked in the local paper, and um, I see that the King's Markham Music Association has a series of recitals starting next weekend. That sounds very interesting. It's in the paper. The advertiser. Right, right. Well, I thought maybe, you know, we could go. To a concert? That's right. Look, um, I've never been to a concert before. Never? Well, I, once, when I was at school. Peter and the Wolf, I think it was. <laughs> What's so funny? Come on. Well, I'm not sure. Um... Look, um... You work Saturday. Okay, forget it. No, no, no. Saturday. It's a date. Really, I'd love to come. Um, I'll call you on Friday, shall I? Okay. I'll speak to you then. Bye. Who is it? Going on, Dad. It's your history teacher. Let's stuff our parking tickets under his wipers. What's the point? Fun is the point. Get them now. Oh, why don't you grow up? I'm tired of your games. I don't believe you. I think you like dressing up and pretending to be good. Why we get on so well together. You and me. And our little fantasies. Come on. Come on. in here somewhere. You know, you ran her over in his car. What? Yeah, he's holding a concert in Miringham. There's a big crowd outside the theatre after. She got in the way of his car. One way of getting to know you here, Al. Hmm. And Zeno paid for a private bed for her. Oh, good publicity, I suppose. Oh, here it is. She'd rather have married Zeno. 
Yeah, I dare say she would, John. But he wouldn't have her, so she had to have the next best thing. Catch as catch can. Good heavens, must you fill him up with these cynical views? <laughs> right, dinner's ready. Get the butter in you, John. Yeah. I can't imagine Nell married to Dunsell, can you? No, I can't. Come by, come nigh, come try. Tell by, some cry, some sigh. Some lie and some die. First thing tomorrow morning, I want you to swear up the search warrant for Dunsan's house. I'm sure Dawn Stoner was killed there. I don't think Dunsan killed her. I think she'd have killed him if they'd had a fight. <laughs> I agree. What do you hope to find there? I expect to find two things. First, traces of blood. Second, I expect Dunsan to confess to killing Dawn Stoner to protect his former and much-loved wife. Why? Dunsand isn't the only one that could have let her in. Nell Tate had a key. All right, Constable. Do you ever see your former wife? No. Never, Mr. Dunsand? Not now. You're aware that she's staying at the Cheriton Forest Hotel? Yes, I saw it in the paper. A picture of her with a lot of flowers for that poor girl's funeral. She used to fill the house with flowers. Stevens. Any women's clothes in that wardrobe? No. And there's no blood? Nothing. This is the last room. Hmm. Now what's in here? The good vintage? I sent this key to my former wife, and she returned it to me by post. Mrs. Tate was never here. I should like to make a point of that. I found the girl here when I got home on June the 6th. She, she must have got in by the window. Uh, the kitchen fanlight was left unfastened. I in encountered her as soon as I let myself in. She was giving the place what I believe thieves call a going over. We struggled and uh, I killed her. I hit her with a bottle of wine she left on the table. Can't you do better than that? No, wait. Uh, let me finish. I thought she was going to attack me. I only meant to knock her out. How many burglars do you know come armed with a bottle of wine, Mr. Dunsand? You must believe me. We've been searching here all day, Mr. Dunsand. We haven't found any evidence of a murder, not even the smallest trace. After it got dark, I put her body in the field and the other things in the river. Then I washed the floor and the walls. God, I didn't know what to do. Well, <sighs> you're going to caution me. 
How could a man like that have killed? It's beginning to sound convincing. Can you imagine a man like that beating a woman to death because he suspected her of breaking into his house? Len Crocker said that the killer must have been mad with rage. He couldn't have killed her. In that case, he must know who did. That ex-wife of his or her husband, they're involved in some way. They both got alibis, good ones. I know. So who let Dawn Stormer into Dunsand's house? We ought to carry on questioning Dunsand. He knows more than he's telling. I wonder. Does he know any more than that his wife or the woman that he thinks of as his wife may be in danger? I think he knows very little. As little of the whole as that girl who died. What are you doing, Stevens? It's all the same. We're closing down the incident center. Oh, well done, Inspector. What? Oh, you got a confession. What more do you want? Evidence. Hmm. Why, you get that. I know that man isn't guilty. Well, even if he isn't, the press are satisfied. So we don't need this place anymore. You might quote you on that, sir. To the press. You can say what you want. But I've already told them that we've got our man. Well, we haven't. Well, then, you better find him. First thing tomorrow, we let Leonard Dunsand go. She used to fill the house with flowers. She'll fill the void with love scented flowers, and she'll sit with me in the fast fading light. Then my dream will sift into the night. What do you think? What do you think?
Hello? Mike, I'm sorry to ring you this late, but do you know where Reg is? I... No. Mike, I thought he was with you. Well, I've rung the station and they don't know where he is and I've tried everywhere. Didn't he come home? Well, I don't know. God, what's going on? Oh, it's all right. Calm down. I'll find him. in time. Show's about to begin. so happy, don't they? Why does it happen? Yes. Now, what was Dawn Stoner doing in that dress? When Pat was getting ready for the wedding last week, she was trying on her bridesmaid's outfit. Something happened which I haven't thought about till tonight. She was trying on the bridesmaid's dress that Grace had made her, looking in the mirror. But when she turned to me for my approval, it wasn't Pat. I thought there was a connection. Um, there was no song about the lost wife. <laughs> I don't know. Um, who was it? When Pat turned to you, Mike, who was it? Jean? Uh, no. Mike! No! For Christ's sake, man, this is important! No! I wished it! Damn her. But you saw her. It has nothing to do with this. It has everything to do with this. Oh. 
Dunson's previous house. Where did that come from? Dr. Tate gave it me. Tate? Mm. Your wife's been phoning, sir. All right. Sorry, Mike. I'll tell her you told me. Hello, Dora. I'm sorry, I... Rich, Rich where are you? Didn't I tell you what was going on here? Yeah. Same here. I'll, I'll be back as soon as I can. Is Mike with you? Yes, yes, he's here. I'll be back as soon as I can. Are you all right? Yeah, I'm fine. Absolutely fine. Yeah, bye. Mike. Look. Blood. Do you realize this is the only piece of evidence, the only piece of hard evidence we've got? usual for me. Yes, sir. I love the chicken. Yes, sir. He's here. Let him win. Excuse me. Yes? Mr. Dunsand. Leonard Dunsand. Is he a guest here? Let me see, Mrs. Tate. No, there's no one registered under that name. But there is a message for you. Come on, Zeno's waiting. Get off! Open the door.
come out. Come out and talk to me. It's me. I'm here. I'll be all right now. Come on, darling. <gasps> it was meant to be a joke. It wasn't my idea. It was Theno. He put her up to it. He said he'd meet her at your house. Gave her the key you sent me. Told her everything to do. She wanted Sino. And you wanted me. I told him not to. <laughs> Open the door. Please. What are you doing? He's in there. Leave him. We're going home. No. I've had enough of this. Need we fear who knows it when none can call our power to account? Macbeth, a tragedy. Well, you did say the police were more sophisticated with their practical jokes. This must have taken some organizing. Don San told us everything today. Chivalry made him lie at first, now for your sake. Then I persuaded him to perform this little charade of me in compassion for your next victim. I'll be safe now. I suppose you heard Nell's little speech. We did. Whatever he's done, we weren't involved. You know that. I believe you weren't, Mr. Tate. Casinos. We don't have to stay here. We've done nothing. Let's go. She's right. Who the hell do you think you are? There's nothing you can do to you know it. I can make you jump. That's enough. You've gone far enough. We know all we need to know. Start packing, kids. We're out of here. <laughs> Come on, play games. Here's a game. You sing. I knew he liked me. I did. Now sing. What? Let me believe. No. It's all in the words, isn't it? Sing! Stop bullying me. The song you wrote for Dunsand. You sing it for us! Get out of here! Words are sticking in your throat, aren't they? All the poor man's soul is there. It's pleased to know, not to break the relationship completely, but to let him believe, sometimes, occasionally, that she was still his wife. This man needs a holiday. You had power over Dunsand. You told Zeno everything. Zeno had power over you, but it wasn't complete. You wanted to take her power from Dunsand away from her. Then you saw Dawn Stoner, and you conceived your sick little joke, which would resolve two sad relationships at one blow. Your ex-husband gave me this. He sent it to you, but it was returned to him by Dawn Stoner. Dawn Stoner. The first of June. Her flatmate's birthday lunch. And she misses it to meet you. to feel secure. Her dream was coming true.
You arranged to spend the night with you in the little house you just bought back home. Your common home, King's Market. Then you gave her the details, the exact details Nell had given you of her meetings with Dunsand. Choose to get food for a small meal. There would be a dress waiting for her on the bed upstairs. She was to wear it. You gave her a key to let herself in with. She was to wait. You'd be there. That she and Dunsand were people with feelings didn't enter your head, did it? If you say so. It's true. It was a prank. How was I to know Nell had married a nutcase, mind you? Maybe I should have known she married you. He has a point. Dunsan must be unstable. Zeno cannot be held responsible for that. Who kills Mr. Tate? He who holds the knife? He who says stab? Or he who sends the victim to the appointment? So what did he do? I don't want to know. He came home. Came home. And what did he see? Dawn. A travesty of his wife, a succubus, a demonic prostitute. Something that existed in his sick mind to torment him. He had to destroy it. <laughs> Well, if he's lucky, he'll be helped. If Zeno tells the truth, the courts will believe him. But if Zeno ought to be punished. You've certainly got through to him. <laughs> That's what I like about you, Mike. Always the optimist. I've a lot to thank you for. Oh? What did I do? When I saw your sadness and your anger at losing Jean, I realized what Dunsan must have felt. Glad. So am I. Now she's gone in the harsh light of day. When she'll return, the night would not say. And I have left to vision the time 